project to me <clears throat> is in the long run to try and get the stream that we're fishing turned into a catch and release because I feel it's a very, very fragile environment, but it's also one of the last great native brook trout streams around here. Fly fishing, people tell me, you know, or you read that that fly fishing's an art or it's it's something beyond what I feel it is. It's not it's not an art, you know. I don't care about tight loops. I don't I don't care about drag free drifts or it's not like that how we fish, you know, it's it's more than that, it's the grind. It's uh getting your hands dirty, it's uh, busting a knuckle on a boulder, it's, you know, it's, it's not an art form. It's artful, it can be artful, but it doesn't, it all boils down to tight lines and fish. Uh, I gotta say, it really is one of the most magical places on earth. It's, it's like it's set apart from the rest of the surrounding areas. Like when you're driving to it, you know where you are, and we, we know that area very well, but it's like when you get under the Kelly stand, it's like you stepped into Narnia or something. It's like you instantly are not thinking about anything else other than that water and being there at that time. And it kind of just geographically the way it is, it kind of creates that sense of, of being separated from the rest of the world. And I think that's what I love about it is just how set apart it is. And it's it, it's like if the, the two go hand in hand, fly fishing and fly fishing at the Kelly stand because they both have that effect of like, you will never have a bad day on the Kelly stand, ever. You'll never have a bad day fly fishing.